Go for now. Fingers. He's the man, the man with the Midas touch. Don't touch too much. Ooh, gold finger. Next to you, the, I don't remember the rest of it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Screenplay, I'm Nick. I'm Steph. And I'm Miles. And that is Chris, the Screenplay Fish, aka today, Finnifer of Fimberberg, as Ooh. named by Sarah, or Sarah, uh, that, that's one for you, Steph. Yeah, I'll take it, I'll take Finnifer. it. Finnifer, even though that is a boy, that's the only thing I'll say. But I, guess... uh, I had a fish called, um, uh, I've forgotten. Oh, no. You know, Fish, fish marigold. Fish marigold. Yeah. Fish marigold. Oh. I've forgotten. Oh, I thought that was a fish gag. Yeah, Three and, and fish marigold, marigold made such an impact on your life. Uh, but this is uh, this today. We're not here to talk about fish. But if you do want to name that fish, let us know in the comments using the hashtag name that fish. Uh, here today, though, we are talking about relationship advice. This is a little. Uh, I was about to say Judge Judy. Who's one of the Dr. Okay. Phil? He's still around. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to stop playing Xbox. He's okay, more yeah. like. Agony Aunt. That's Agony. the that's the one I was trying to think uh, of. Yeah. Oh, the Judge Judy. <laughs> Judge Judy. Uh, okay, but what we're talking about today is uh, our gaming habits in relationships. How we play video games, how our partners deal with us playing video games, whether or not they play video games, and uh, you know some advice for people uh, in relationships where necessarily your partner may not understand why you play video games so much and what you like about them. This topic came about because recently one of the members of the team who is not on camera uh, had their Xbox thrown down the driveway. And, uh, and had to start a GoFundMe to get a new Xbox. And then someone else who works in the building had uh, their copy of Call of Duty snapped in half. I mean, that's so. just so volatile. It is, and also it's I think- It's a different relationship I, to my relationship. It, it is, and I think it's also a, a pretty uh, strong uh, reason to start buying digital uh, passion, copies of though, video games it? as opposed to physical media. Uh, Real passion. We'll start off, uh, you know, taking the, the temperature of the table and our gaming habits with our partner. Steph, your partner. <laughs> this is my partner is the only one that everyone knows, so it's awkward for me to talk about. But it's not because we have a pretty like symbiotic home. You should say who, your partner is Tom Cruise. Um, <laughs> famous for his Dota hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my partner plays a lot of Dota mm -hmm. and a lot of PUBG. Yep. I would say primarily. Yep. I play. I tend to play uh, online role playing games. I play multiplayer RPGs as well. Um, but I would say on a nightly average, he plays those same two games every night. And I play different games more sporadically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so our gaming habits are different, but we both game a lot. Yeah, you guys generally have a pretty uh, simpatico gaming relationship. Yeah, I mean- How I... did you describe it this morning? What you do? Like you get home? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we kind of like, we, we come together at meal times and then we just go our separate ways. They're both quite introverted, so I don't feel like we need to be like in up in each other's grill all the time. Yeah. So we like our own space. So the fact that if he, if he like the fact that he games online with his friends every night, is, I don't care. This, yeah. I go away and I do, you time I do my thing, whether it's playing other games or doing something different or whatever. Like I'm perfectly capable of entertaining myself. No one's gonna. <laughs> You're a grown up. No, one, no one's gonna video Scotty like. <laughs> yeah, right? I've never yeah, seen a bloody yeah, Insta yeah. story from Pete about Scotty, so let's just put that out there. Uh, Miles, Pete. Yep. your partner, you guys in your gaming relationship. She doesn't game, she's never gamed. I introduced games to her life. I think she came from like a non-gaming family, which mm -hmm. is a real thing, um, and she's definitely watching this right now, so I'm gonna be very <laughs> careful. No, no, what she's- What a fine and beautiful woman she is. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's not a gamer by, um, by sort of background, like I am a very, Serious game. <laughs> no, in, don't in, like lightly no, no. stroke your face. As in, as in I don't the, like the facial like, touching. I identify with people who have like serious addictions because when I was a kid, all I wanted to do was just game all the time. And even to this very day, like I'd rather be playing games right now instead of sitting here with you two lovely folks so talking about that. Agreed. What does she do in the evenings? To, she, like... she typically just makes sure that our life isn't crumbling to pieces <laughs> around us because she's a very responsible and, and, and capable human being. Whereas I'm like, ooh, I've got to play Metal Gear Survive even though I fucking hate it. That's basically <laughs> like my life. No, but she she's um you know she's she she doesn't have too many hobbies. Like that's that's out there. Whereas like gaming is a hobby that takes up 
so much time. Mm. Yeah. It's it's like you know if you paint miniatures or if you do stamps or I'm thinking I'm running out of hobbies. Or if like you fly do drones over stamps. people's If you fly drones over do people's houses. Do you do stamps? Um, so that's a tricky. It's a tricky thing to manage at home, especially for someone who's not a gamer who's like. Do you really have to play for another four hours? Uh, so do you like? Are you finding that conf like? Does that conflict happen? How do you oh, resolve there, that? Oh, yeah, there's definitely yeah. been conflict. Yeah, but and and managing that has been um, it's just all about communication. Mm. And I remember at first, so the very first time that gaming like came back into our lives, it was like when Halo Four came out, and I didn't have an Xbox or anything. I just moved here, and I was like, I need to buy an Xbox. I need to drop like six hundred bucks, and I need to buy a game, and I'm gonna need an Astro headset, and I'm gonna need a good controller, and I'm gonna. So I had to like drop this massive amount of cash. She was like, Why are we broke? And then it was, I'm going to be gone for the next two days. And she was like, what do you mean? Like, we have a life together. <laughs> We've got, like, responsibilities. And I was like, yeah, but the Master Chief, yeah, he was around for a long time before you. And it was, it was a weird thing. <laughs> Dude, that's it. But it was where a, is he now, Miles? <laughs> it was a hard thing to mesh back into a, to a life. And, and then, again, a lot of conversations surrounding that. A lot of uh, back and forth about, like, oh, this is really important. She does understand that. I've got a serious gaming background mm. as in my general life. But... You have to communicate. You have to be really upfront about like how much time you're going to be spending. Um, and it doesn't always work out because I'm not going to lie, I'm an addict. I've got problems. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> how about you? Uh, so my partner does not game. I mean, she she will play something with me if I'm like. I think you're going to love this, and we're going to play this together. It'll be a unique and uh, interesting, enriching experience for you. Snipper Clips is the perfect example on the Switch. Mm -hmm. That was something where I was like, you're going to think this is great fun and really cute. She's into that sort of co-op stuff if if it's the right game and at the right time and all that, you know, the stars align. Uh, but she would never sit down and just play something. I'm never walking into the house and like, oi, get <laughs> off. Uh, but she's very understanding of, of uh, my... My, my needs uh, because because basically before we got into a relationship we were friends beforehand and she knew that this was all I talked about all the time like right. I was just so you, like you had like a pre-established gaming routine that, that yeah and you know I'd you come could in warn and warn her about prior to uh, getting emotionally involved exactly so <laughs> and so then when the relationship started it was like well uh, like you know that this is what I love to do with my time and yeah. so uh, maybe I'm not going to change. Like, I would change maybe, in, please. If, if I suddenly developed a gaming habit five years into the relationship, then that would be like, oh, maybe you could go, hey, I think that, you know, we need to make sure this and this. But for, at the beginning, I'm like, I pick games over you right at the beginning. Of what course, is, now. What is, what is she, I'm sorry, I find this, like, question fascinating because I'm just, I want to know how people occupy their time. What does she do? Like, baby aside, yeah. what does she do to, like, occupy her time in the evenings? Okay, so, first of all, I will say that she is the most understanding, wonderful human being on the planet, uh, so that's why I, you know, can kind of do whatever I want when it comes to this. Um, <laughs> to qualify, right? <laughs> well, you're no, watching this, right? No, well, I was, I was thinking about, it, I was like, she like, is God's gift uh, to this. She, earth. she <laughs> is God's gift, <laughs> baby. Don't leave me. You're all I have in my life. Um, but uh, what does she do? She, uh, uh, she follows lots of um, uh, vlogs and YouTube stuff. Like she's yeah, really sure, into yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. Uh, lots of, she's always busy. She's always, it's the same thing as you, where it's not necessarily like the one defining hobby. And I think that's the Still thing. Video games become something that I think for, at least everyone watching this show, I feel like, it's like the thing that you do. And then on the side, you do these other hobbies. Like yeah. it's good to have a variety of things that you do. But gaming is like, I will always play video games. Mm. I always go back to video games. Um, and then I look at other people, I'm like, oh, most of you don't have that kind of like, one thing that you do and yeah. then the rest of the life like fits in around that. I, I find it fascinating because you know when you meet someone who doesn't have a television or something like they're like yeah. oh, or they just haven't seen any shows that everyone has seen and you're just like what are you doing with your time yeah. if you're not doing what the rest of us are doing? Why are you not watching if you're not Spartan? Playing, if you're not playing video games or watching Netflix uh, who are you and what do you do? Are they like I just picture they're, sit, like, they're sitting at home staring at the wall. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's no, okay. and no. So, <laughs> they've got like really, really time consuming hobbies like musical instruments or ice sculpting or, <laughs> or doing stamps. But so uh, I guess I guess part of this is going, I think that what you said, it is about communication. It's about like if your partner is not into video games, first of all, I think it's what you could do is introduce them to co-op games because that just seems like the best way. Like that's something that where uh, something simple which you can play together uh, is really good. But if they're not interested in playing video games, games then I think uh, I know I've got friends who are like oh my partner doesn't understand that I play and it's a, a source of friction in our relationship mm. the the trick there is to try to show them that 
This is an aspect of your personality, it's not the whole thing. And this is, and I feel like equating it to something in their life. That's what I, that was always my advice of going like, oh, you know how you do X? Well, this is my version of X. Yeah, it's, I guess it's difficult, particularly when it's like, like online multiplayer games, everyone's kind of playing together, mm -hmm. usually in the evening. And that's the time when a lot of people want to spend time together because yeah. you get home from work. And so I understand that that's, and it's really hard to introduce someone who doesn't game into that because you have an established group of people who play a game that's maybe more advanced. And oh, so, the spinning around looking at the sky sort of situation, yeah, like you don't yeah. want to be going, it, it oh, this is the next Kind of like a, a bit of a barrier there. I feel like the the way that the only the only thing that I have uh, is that I'm very fussy about when I eat. Like if I'm hungry, I'm like we're eating at six thirty mm -hmm. and no later. So, really? Yeah, yeah. My God. So if and like you know, typical game of Dota lasts like forty five minutes or whatever. So I say to Peter, we're eating at six thirty, so he won't start a game. Like yeah. he's got five five thirty to five forty five is his window to start another game yeah, of Dota. Yeah, but if it's five fifty five, he won't do it. That and is then, such and a then good it's point. awesome, and that's compromise, which is like. That is such a good point because nice. I think I actually think that multiplayer is the is the new hardest thing to deal with in a relationship with someone who doesn't play yeah. or understand video games. Because in the past you could just pause a game and walk away, whereas now Overwatch, uh, like any MOBA, pub, these things where not only are you playing online against other people, when you're playing as a team with people, mm. it's not like you could just go, okay, I'm going to abandon this match because it doesn't matter if I lose. It's, no, if I abandon this match, not only do I let my team down, mm. but I get a strike against my account, which means that I can't participate in this matchmaking. Like, I need to play five games of, like, bullshit uh, matchmaking as punishment to get... and. To explain to people, I'm sorry I'm in the middle of like a 45 minute match where I can't leave. Uh, yeah. Them going, what are you talking about? The baby needs feeding, the dog's upside down in the <laughs> swimming pool, and the house is on fire. Like, why? The, the closest comparison you could possibly have in that scenario is like, imagine being on like a five-a-side soccer football, soccer team, and going away and playing in the afternoons. You're like, well, from this time to this time, I'm on the field with the boys or the girls yeah. or whatever. Like, I'm, I'm literally going to be involved in a team-based mm. sporting Activity. It's like and the, you, but you this time, and so because, because you can't see those other team members, it makes it I know, difficult. That's the thing. And, you're, and you're in your house. You're in yeah. your house, sitting in the living room, and they're right over there. It's you're, like, like, you're like, no, for real. Like, you go get the dog. I'll put the kitchen out. This is on fire right now. But you're like, baby, please. And, if, and, and in that soccer analogy, it's not like someone would just walk into the field and go, uh, can you just hang out the washing? And it's like. <laughs> Baby, I'm in That's, goal right now. You're like, they need me. Like, give me one second. Boom. Catch, I, I really, I really do think it's about compromise and just finding those those moments where you kind of uh, like kind of help each other out. Because I think, it's, I don't feel like there's ever a time when I'm like, oh, this weekend I really want to do this thing, and he's like, nah, I'm gonna be playing games because he yeah. plays games consistently through the through the week. Yeah. And then if we have plans, then we'll go do something together. What I think I would have trouble is a game like WoW. I think WoW is still a bit of a scourge on humanity because when you get to a certain level of WoW, you're mm. like daily quests, you're like nightly raids, and it becomes like a daily chore. And the and, guild needs you. And the guild needs they need you. you. And it's it's not like a quick round of PUBG or like a 45 minute game of whatever. It's like you're in it and then it's a hole and it's addictive. Yeah, and it's that it's never just, ending game just, thing where you yeah, just, you can't yeah, give it up. Yeah, yeah. That, that uh, would be an issue for me for sure. Look, it's all very complicated, but we do have some screen saves because a lot of people had a lot of opinions and a lot of like chat sure. about this. So let's get to the screen saves. We're gonna, right now. Uh, first up, we got uh, at Tom Harmathy. Uh, who wrote in and said, well, I'm sad and alone, so I can play games as much and however I like to. So, you know. That's the ultimate scenario. That then, I sounds guess, nice, yeah. Sad and alone <laughs> is, you go. means that you can play yeah, as much really alone. as you want. Is he really alone? Because in that guild, there's like a hundred members. That's true. Uh, at Dutchie 86 says, um, uh, he doesn't, referring to their partner, but he does support my hobby. We play Overcooked on the Switch together and he downloaded Pokemon Go when it was released to understand why I was excited. Aww. I don't try to get him interested. Instead, we, instead, we spend time doing things we both enjoy. And I think that that's part of that compromise thing of going, well, explaining, well, this is something that I like to do with my time, and I understand that it can't be all of my time, so I'm gonna, like, we can agree that I can set aside X amount of time on the weekend or whatever to do this, and then we'll also do all this stuff that we love together, mm -hmm. and then you can do some stuff that you want to do, and it's just about, yeah, I don't, in a relationship, you can't just lock yourself away for 10 hours anymore, mm -hmm. and that's actually a good thing. Like, yeah, that's really why you're in a relationship, right? Even, like, when they're in a gaming session, maybe, like, make them a little snack. And then when you're playing eight hours of divinity, they'll bring you a little snack from the server next door. And that's love. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it, Pete? That's a little snack. That's love. Uh, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say that once it's like uh, your partner trying to get into it to understand your hobby, mm. you know, of their own accord. Like I got a phone call once, she was like, 
She was playing South Park The Stick of Truth. Do I continue or new game? And I was like, new game, new game, new game! <laughs> Don't, new game! And then like I came home and she was, the first complaint she had, she was like, I just made my character look so much like Gandalf. <laughs> And then within like three seconds, they changed his appearance. And she was furious about the fact that like, yeah, the game took it away from But I love that, that because really she got stuck right into <laughs> something that she had no idea how to do. Yeah. She literally just followed all the on-screen prompts and was like, I'm not enjoying this that much, but I'm learning and I'm trying to understand it. So oh. the best. And also, the best. and also on that, if your partner does take the time to understand your gaming habits, you better take the time to understand like dressage or welding or whatever the, ice the fuck they're into. Ice or sculpting. the doing of the stamps. Uh, Rippin Hara says, uh, my partner does not understand very well. Usually I just pick a night or, uh, or to play when kids are asleep and she has something to watch on the box. Most frequent quote about my Xbox, quote, I hate that fucking thing. <laughs> uh, at Tim WS says we play a lot of games together. It was a great way to keep connected when we were doing a long distance. To get, working together to win a level helped the distance seem smaller. Wow, that is Isn't adorable. That nice? That's Isn't that really, really nice. sweet. I love that. And at Oblivious Geek says my wife is not a gamer, so I'm super interested in what people have to say as I'm out of ideas. So hopefully we've given you some ideas. And if she's not into games. Uh, she probably could continue her ice sculpting career, which Bar seems to think that all of our partners have. <laughs> Alright, what do you guys think about this? Do you want to name that fish? And let us know in the comments uh, how you deal with, uh, you know, your gaming habits, your partner's gaming habits, if they, uh, if they game or not, and what their hobbies are, how you are interested in the things that they do, so that in turn they understand the things you're doing. Uh, basically, this is just a relationship advice episode, so help everybody in the comments below, particularly at Oblivious Geek. Uh, let's help him be a little less oblivious. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel and if you turn the notifications on then you'll get little notifications when we put up something new which is super handy and we've got cool videos right there and there on the other side of Nick. Ha!